is KTN News. Back. It's now 7 o'clock local time. It's time for The Way It Is. And you're welcome to participate in the conversation. And you can do that via social media. And the hashtag is KTN Morning Express. You can also tweet, and that's at uh, KTN Kenya. Or you can also tweet me directly, and that's at uh, Michael G. Gitonga. And we also have a Twitter poll question that would like to hear what your take is. Should the renegade members of parliament be suspended of, or ousted? Uh, from their parties and uh, we'll be looking and reading through uh, sampling through your answers as we carry on right here but a quick reintroduction of the panelists that i have this morning i have to my uh, extreme left honorable farah maalim and also betty adera joining us this morning for this conversation i did cut you short just before we took the break uh, honorable farah maalim and this is to do with uh, the nys scandal that's on the headlines of the daily nation today for on the run as nys trial begins but we did not even have closure, per se, with NYS trial one. Here we are again on two. Your confidence levels in terms of whether we are really going to get culprits convicted on this? Well, so far, the signs are that uh, the DPP is doing a very good job. He's, he's doing a fantastic job. And uh, let's, let's get to the bottom of these things. But, but when, we say you, you, you see, when we say he's doing a good job, what are we using as a measure? Because if it's arrest, yes. we've had arrests before. But, but you see, prosecutions are, uh, prosecutions are uh, a process. It's a process. Yeah. It's a process, and it's, it's, it's a two institutions. He has to prepare his case very well, prosecute it very well, and then, of course, the, 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 the independent arbiter, who are the judges themselves. So, so, yeah, but as long as the thing is in the pipeline, as long as so many people are getting nabbed and, and being hauled to court. And, and also with, with the accompanying, accompanying uh, procedure, that the moment you, you become a suspect and you're hauled to court yourself, you also cease to, pry, to, to operate as a civil servant or you, you, you go on interdiction until the matter itself is concluded on a half pay. Uh, I think that this is, this is a good thing, in my opinion, uh, that we have to complete the process. That's, that's the point. The, the completion of the process is, is, is another yardstick. It's going to be, we'll see how they prosecute it, whether the prosecution is going to be that a fight is lost or this and that. Or, how know, watertight it's going to be. How watertight it's going to be, how much uh, uh, a serious uh, uh, work they're going to do because taking people to court and, and losing that matter itself is, 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 is not good at all. Mm. And, and my presumption is that they're doing a very good job. Okay, they're, so far they're, so they're, good. They're, yeah, so far yeah. so good. Mm. We have to give them the benefit of doubt now. Mm and then see whether this is going to be just like the old stuff we used to see right from the Kanu days. When Ezekiel, Yugi, Biwot, and, and Guka, and all those people would be hauled to jail and stay in remand, actually, and be, you remember that? Yes, On, yes. on, on, on Oko thing. Mm. And, and then the matter dies out again uh, after that, and hardly anybody else is, anybody is, 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 is brought to book on that. We don't want that. We want to see a conclusion of this thing and a fast conclusion. A very, a very, you know, mm. uh, expedited, mm. a very, very fast one. Okay. Uh, but not, not at the cost of the, the, the preparation itself. Mm. Uh, you can do a powerful preparation within the shortest possible time mm. and have a watertight case. And, okay. Yeah, Betty, your thoughts on this, on the NYS trial, and what maybe your expectations are in this mm -hmm. particular case? If we look at some of uh, what we've seen so far um, from, you know, the likes of Girita admitting that she actually walked into NYS, um, signed a form which she was not too sure what it was all about. Within a few days, 60 million has hit her account. There are obviously glaring issues right here. I think corruption in Kenya has run so deep, and to me it's bordering on being evil. Over and above being criminal, it is being evil. The Auditor General caps 600 billion as the amount of money that we as a country lose each year to corruption. What we are seeing on the newspapers and in, in the media houses are the high profile ones. Mm -hmm. But every other day, there are other smaller, smaller ones, that, but corruption is corruption, it's big, corruption. Big, big or small. Mm -hmm. And I want to just say that I want to just appeal to myself and to fellow Kenyans that look, 
the fight against corruption is not only the president's job. It is not only the job of parliament. It's not only the job of, of, of elected or appointed leaders. It is everybody's job. And except we come as a people to that understanding, we are going to continue losing 600 billion or more every year. And that, of course, is going to put the implementation of like the big four agenda into, in, into jeopardy. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, I, I, like Moshimiwa has said, I totally uh, 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 am excited with the output so far of the current DPP. But like he says, I agree. That for me, I want to see heads rolling. I want to see big heads rolling, as we've seen a few. But I also want to see small heads rolling. I want to see heads rolling, mm. all right? Because there's no way we are going to create jobs for our youth if we are losing 600 billion every year to corruption. Mm. Exactly. All right. Uh, Honorable Farah Ma'alim will move from this and I'd want us to look at something different. but. Our fight for corruption is something that has started since independence and we are still trying. It's not something that is new. What do we need to change? It's unfortunate that we've had legislators change. Of, in fact, they say that Kenya has one of the highest turnover of legislators, mm. but it just doesn't seem to have helped us as a country. Mm -hmm. Well, you need, uh, more than anything else, you need um, a head of state, a head of government for that matter, a head of government in this case. Uh, who is going to be serious about the fight on corruption. Do you think Uhuru is serious? I, I want to see it, believe it. I'll be honest with you. What, what uh, more uh, do you need to see? If, if you, you're, a, you're, a, you're, I don't know how old you are, but uh, uh, I, was, I was an adult uh, going through college when uh, Moi came to power in 1978. And, and, and uh, uh, the, the catch word was Makendo. He had a problem saying Magendo. So he used to say Makendo. Mm. Uh, and, and that was basically what endeared him to Kenyans. We really wanted to see uh, somebody coming in to tame corruption. And, and he became our, our darling. I mean, the Kenyans really, really supported Moi when he came into power. Because the, the regime before that was, was, was seen as, as, as having created the foundation, laid the foundation. What it turns out, 24 years later, when Moi is leaving office, that corruption under, under Kibaki was, sorry, under Kenyatta, the Kenyatta one, Kenyatta senior, was, was, was very small compared to what we encountered under Moi's rule. Mm, in the 24 uh, years. In the 24 years, it was bad. Because those days, people used to talk about Mr. 10%. I don't know if you remember. There was a minister for commerce who used to be called Mr. 10%. Every time he has to give out a, a, a license for you to be allowed to import certain things into the country. That's what they used to say. But then we ended up with corruption taking everything, 70%, 60%, 80%, literally. And not only robbing the domestic revenue, but robbing uh, the future of our children by, by stealing the, the, the debts, the loans the Takwell Gorge and all those things that basically were big time. Now, uh, and, then, and, then, and then probably a little bit of it, we expected it to be tamed very well under Kibaki. And, and, and Kibaki's time was not as bad as, of course, the uh, prior, mm. but, but equally, equally seriously bad. And then now, the last five years, was, was something else altogether. And uh, you, you know what I mean, it is it's terrible. Uh -huh. So, uh, and, and in every case, in every case, uh, the, 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 the new administration that time had used the corruption as the first thing they're going to tame. Uh -huh. We never did it. So, so if, whether Uhuru is going to be serious about this and he's going to tame it, whether he's going, it's whether, it's whether, to whether he's going to be different from everybody else before him, we just have Every, to wait and everybody see. Everybody else Although before there, him. there are those who've argued that under Jubilee government, corruption has actually now gone a notch higher. Now we're talking That's terms point. of billions. That's the point, uh, yes, yes, When it yes. comes to how much yes, is lost. Yes, and yes. despite the president coming out and sounding very tough, it's not once that he has cast or, as it were, sworn that uh, heads are going to roll, but they haven't rolled. But maybe just to change that debate a little bit, let me come to you, Betty. And we have KCP exams starting today. Mm -hmm. One of the issues that we have seen so far and has been highlighted is the question of exam cheating. Because mm -hmm. even when we talk about corruption, it seems to begin at a very early stage. Mm -hmm. And what is unique about what uh, you know, the research is showing now uh, is uh, the fact that uh, 
some parents are even colluding with teachers mm. to have their, 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 their you know, um, children uh, cheat exams. Now, that is worrying because not only now is it the teachers who want the, the children to pass for them for whatever reason, mm -hmm. but the parents now even colluding with students. I mean, where are we headed? Our value system mm -hmm. seems to be completely upside down. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, I want to take uh, this opportunity to wish all the students uh, who are sitting their KCSE this, from today and also KCP later on in, in the week, all the best, you know, in the exams as this set of exams, whether class 8 or form 4, is going to determine the next phase of their life as they pursue careers and further education. Now, having said that, Mike, I want to say that parents are not only colluding now. Every time there was an exam cheating, parents have always been there, all right, in the background. Only that right now, we are getting more and more in informed and mm. more information mm. about the tiny little, you know, intrigues behind the scenes. But parents have always been... In the picture, in, 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 in the, the background. Picture, in the mm. background. Because it is the parent who will want to send his or her child to school X. Why? Because school X appears to be, you know, a performing, a performing school. Now, cheating in exam per se, to me, is another, is another evil. What are you doing to this child? Whether it's the teacher or the parent or the school administration or the local administration or, or all of them. You know, the person concerned here is this child, is this candidate. You're going to cheat. You're going to give this kid an A, all right? And they're going to get the A's. Then what? A's that they did not, that they deserve. did not de deserve. And as they move to the next level, that is when you're going to have doctors who kill. You're going to have teachers who, 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 who don't you know, pass the, kind, the right kind of information. Mm. And when they go to the next level, they won't make it anyway because you can't always keep cheating. You can't in, cheat your way through life. Th through life, mm -hmm. exactly. So mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a time we go back uh, to the basics as a community as, as, and, and just interrogate our, our thought process, interrogate our value systems and redefine what we mean when we say, I am successful. Because one of the definitions of success of family X is what? Their child went to Alliance. Their child went to Kenya High School. Their child went to Lenar. Regardless of how they got Regardless there. of how they got there. So I think if we want to have a country in one piece in the next 10, 20 years, we need to figure out what we say to our children today mm -hmm. and the kind of values we impart to them. Mm -hmm. I think one key message to our children should be what? You do your best. Whatever that best of yours will be, there's always a space for you. There's always something, uh, someone who got an E will do. There's always something someone who got a C or A will do. Kenya is too big, and it is enough, you know, for all of us. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is even more important uh, when you look at the candidates who are girls and, and, and young women. If you steal for her, what really are you telling her? Mm -hmm. She's not going to be able to circumvent the life issues that she will face beyond mm -hmm. Standard 8 beyond Form 4. So I think Kenyans, let's just rethink and go back to our basics. All right, Honorable Farah Ma'alim, and I guess that also brings into question our uh, education system in terms of we've really highlighted and put a lot of uh, emphasis on academics because even those who possibly do not get A's um, doesn't mean that, you know, that's the end of life yeah. for them. They probably yeah. are also gifted in other areas. Other but things. do we need to relook re at our education system? Well, I, I, I think uh, we are looking at our education system, the curriculum, the fields or the areas that need to be promoted to see if we can, it can help spur growth in the economy itself. This is an ongoing thing. It's always been there throughout our... We've always been trying to see universities do that, the tertiary colleges do that. And, and, and I think uh, yes, emphasis is going to be there on uh, vocational training. Emphasis is going to be there also on technical fields because no country can really exponentially grow in terms of economic growth without uh, industrialization. So we need to put a lot of emphasis on, on industrialization, which, which is not the case right now. We're producing too many procurement officers and we're producing too many uh, areas, fields, that, that essentially are not going to be of that much of help in our country right now. Mm -hmm. So th that one is an ongoing thing, and I don't doubt the capacity of the ministry 
and, and uh, to, to look at these things and the other academics and the scholars we have in our national universities. But having said that, uh, we did uh, a very good job. I think Matiang did a very good job in curbing exam cheatings. Exam cheatings, by the way, have been with us. Mm -hmm. It's only now we are, we are seeing in hindsight. It's been there with us from, from soon after independence. Because in those early days, there were places where people, the elder brother would go and do the exam for the younger brother. Right. And, 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 and pass very well. And that person goes uh, to one of the top schools. And, and then also that went on until people started um, uh, getting admission to, you know, to universities and such places without the requisite papers, but with some kind of uh, forgeries and the rest. Uh, and, and it has, it has, uh, uh, gone to very high levels. People have gone all the way and done PhDs when their mm -hmm. first uh, initial uh, uh, high school certificates were not genuine. Uh, and, and so that, that has been a problem and many outside the country, both inside the country, very accomplished mm -hmm. I'm told in some cases. But right now I want to both uh, congratulate for the good job he had done when he was there at Matiangi and Amina is doing a very good job right now. She has, she has, she has really taken a lot of time from what I hear in making sure that the powerful, brilliant structures are in place such that this does not happen again. To the extent which I'm told she, she sits in the airport to receive uh, exam papers. You heard about that sometimes back, uh, materials and the rest of it. And, and she literally is, is not trusting. Uh, she, you know, she wants to be there. To see to it's leading from the front. She is leading from the front. Right. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so I, I want to believe that these these exams are going to be much better than they, we than had. They have been before. Matiangi took it to a certain level, which was much better than what we used to have before that. And I mean, I have a feeling it's going to take it to another level again. All right. Yeah. And we take this opportunity, of course, to wish all the candidates all yeah. the best. And yeah. I believe yeah. Amina Mohammed, we are told, Honorable Amina Mohammed, is also going to be um, somewhere in Nairobi, basically, as they release the examinations, just like you've mentioned, yes, to yes, ensure yes, that, yes. first of all, they are uh, safe and uh, they leave there and go to the places that they're supposed to. So uh, that aside to some good news and this is of course the debut uh, flight from Nairobi to New York oh, yeah. and uh, this took off yesterday but of course this should be uh, opportunities opening for Kenya. Betty your maybe opening remarks in regards to that particular uh, maiden flight that took mm -hmm. off yesterday and uh, the opportunities that Kenya should expect exactly. now with a direct flight yeah. to New York. First and foremost I, as a Kenyan that is one of those things that make me feel like I'm so proud mm, to, be to, be to be a Kenyan, mm. and that is a, a win for Kenya as a country, for East Africa as a region, and I think broadly, you know, for, for Africa. This maiden flight that left uh, last night is testament to the fact that, hey, look, Kenya and the U.S. can only get stronger in terms of their bilateral, you know, relations, and there are so many goodies and good things that would come, you know, fr from that. And of course, with KQ, the pride of Africa, you know, taking a lead in this, I think is also testament to the fact that as a corporation, they are picking up and they are regaining, you know, their position that they held in the African continent. Mm. Now, having said that, I think for me, I see a huge, huge opportunity for increase in, in business and growth in the economy, as well as increase in, in tourism, which of course then will ultimately you know, result in, in, in a stronger in economy. But just putting a flight every day to, to New York directly is not enough. For me, what I want to see happening is what is the outcome of it? How can we now as Kenyans and, and the region position ourselves you know, to, 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 to reap the maximum benefits of a direct flight from Nairobi to, to the U.S. every single day. Each flight should be carrying the things that we want to sell to the outside world. Mm. And I think young people, women should be enabled to occupy that space so that then this flight makes sense to us. Mm. Otherwise, just a flight for the sake of being a flight. I will not will yield not much. much. All right, Honorable Farah Malim, one of the uh, things that Kenya maybe needs to grow its capacity is the ability to export. We are a consuming country yeah. rather yeah. than a manufacturing mm -hmm. and exporting country. Mm -hmm. Is this an opportunity for us now to change that script, especially when it comes to our relationship now with the U.S.? Look, we are we're importing everything, mm -hmm. including oranges, including eggs, 
we're literally importing everything from outside the country. I think we, the, the, the only way an economy can grow is if those ones either have what you call punitive tariffs to discourage people. You make it so expensive, expensive mm -hmm. that people have to have them locally or manufacture them locally. Or you have a blanket, what you call uh, uh, restrictions on the importation of some of those things. All the things that can be, as a, how you have the capacity of developing. You see, today, if you go to India, you Indian cars are, are, are competing with all other big brands in the world, all over the world. And you can see how Tata is performing here in Kenya. 30 years ago, Tata, nobody would want to touch Tata in Kenya here. Mm -hmm. Look at the Chinese. I remember the very first time that the Chinese tried to have that relationship with us, which was in the, in the 80s. And I was the secretary to Kenya Transport Association that time. And, and it's like, no, 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 you, you know, your brands can never sell these this fancy names you have out here. The understanding is that Chinese uh, products uh, might look uh, uh, glittery, but they're substandard. But today, look at the way the Chinese products mm. are here in the country. Mm. And, and these people developed because they closed their markets to outside uh, importations, or they gave him such a powerful punitive tariffs mm. that it was almost impossible for people. You have to be the super rich, mm. and that's how that's how Korea has developed in in in, the, in, in pushing for its own uh, Hyundai and uh, Sanyong and Kia and the rest of them, and that's how India has developed with the Mahindras and Marutis and the rest of them. When you go in there and everything that's Indian, we, we import a lot of things from India right now, and that's how China has developed. But when you you open your market to literally everybody. And I think this and probably anybody. has yeah. an yeah. angle yeah. of corruption in the sense that it maybe is, those yes. who are it gaining is. from it those is. It is. We, 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 we started that in, uh, in, uh, before, before Kibaki came to power mm -hmm. by destroying our sugar industry. Mm. Because then we would give a, a blanket, what you call tax-free or duty-free importation to sugar. And, and, and sell sugar at, you know, make massive medical profits, profits out of it. And then say, you can import them duty free here. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what basically is killing the market right mm -hmm. now, and like what happened the other day. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that has been cascaded to all sectors, every mm -hmm. sector, including the eggs and, and, and the dairy products and everything else. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, uh, I don't think uh, we've gotten patriotic people who really wanted to take, see this country. By the way, Kenyans are some of the most hardworking people in the world, some of the most innovative people in the world. Creative. But you have to give them an opportunity for yeah. that innovation itself to become, you see, necessity is the mother of invention. If you, if you can't get eggs, you go back and look for how to, how to breed your own chicken, chicken there and yeah. get eggs. You know, you know what I mean? Mm. If you can't get these um, apples from outside, you will see how we can grow apples. Uh, grapes. I remember grapes were being grown in Naivasha in a number of places. Nowadays, people don't grow them because we, import everything. we have imported all, all right. the grapes cheaply. So, so Betty, what, what, what do we need to ensure that our leadership is sensitive to some of these things? Because now, going back to the maiden flight and Kenya mm -hmm. Airways now flying into New York directly, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. if we do not take advantage of that uh, economically, then yes. it's just another flight. Another flight. Mm -hmm. Exactly. For me, I think... Um, um, we may want to have the leadership of this country think about some short-term measures and also long-term measures. But I think for me, the first and foremost would be, can we revive our industries, our manufacturing industries? Cotton in the western uh, side part of the country. Can we do more of coffee? Can we do more of tea? Can we revive you know, sugar? And can we put back laws? Can parliament come back? and hold conversations around no one is going to import X, Y, and Z, make it almost impossible. And can we have the goodwill, you know, for Kenyans and leaders to actually abide by the things that have passed? Kenya is one of the countries that has one of the greatest laws. Actually, even our constitution as it is, mm. is lauded to be one of the most progressive, one of the most pro, you know, next generation and all that. But it can just be a document. But we need to now move forward to translating those into tangible actions that's going to create jobs for our youth. 
that's going to create opportunity for women, that's going to ensure that we have secured our futures, who are the current children and young people that we have today. So for me, I want to, I would wish to see a scenario where we revamp our economy, we revamp our manufacturing you know, capabilities and load things onto this KQ flight every single day for us to, 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 to reap the benefits. Let's cause it to be easy for the, flower for the flower growers, for instance, you know, to push their flowers 